my mouth. I was like, now we're really broadcasting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast, episode number 15. Oh, and then that's where I hit the music. <laughs> You're listening to the Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast. We've got all that's awesomely supernatural on TV, movies, books, games, and more. Your one-stop podcast for vampires, werewolves, mutants, and myths. And now here are your hosts, Archer, Sherry, and Ravenheart. <laughs> Hi, I'm S.A. Archer, co-creator of the urban fantasy series, The She, and we've got my host, my guest, uh, co-host, I don't yeah. know what I'm doing, I'm sitting here going, this is our first live uh, YouTube that we told people to come to, so I'm a little, okay, my co-host, I, I just gotta go with it, you know, my co-host is Sherry Samin, actress and voice talent, Sherry says Hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now she. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Ravenheart, who is the other half of the She Creation team. And I'm we not. are. <laughs> and on the camera, you were pointing the wrong way. <laughs> what depends on which yeah, oh. where yeah. positions are. <laughs> oh, that's right. They shuffled. I, I have Sherry on... in the middle, so I don't know. Yeah. So this way is man. Yeah. This way is woman. Yeah. <laughs> At least on That's, my screen. I don't know how it is it, on your screen. Yeah, yeah, it's opposite. <laughs> this way is you. <laughs> that was all confused. <laughs> so we're trying something new that we kind of started sort of halfway last week where we are going to do the YouTube live and leave the live unedited wacky version on mm -hmm. the YouTube channel. It's working out well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely on the wacky side <laughs> today. Um, and then we are going to continue to do the, the edits and stuff and put out the audio version later with some of the goofiness <laughs> trimmed down to a, a manageable portion. Um, but all the outtakes and stuff are going to be left in on the YouTube channel. All the dog barking and <laughs> yeah. and moments of, of chaos that occur when the like the cat tries to eat the bird and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so we're gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. We've put up on the Twitter. Uh, it should have gone out already. That folks can comment to the Twitter channel. Uh, it's at ultimate uf is our Twitter. If they send a question or comment when we're doing a live show, we will do our best to bring it in if it's relevant. And that's where <laughs> yeah. Ravenheart will be doing his techie god of technology yep, I'm thing. I'm watching the Twitter it. feed. Okay. Um, and then uh, people can watch us live. I've sent it out also on Twitter. I've got it out there to post in a few minutes where we'll invite people to hop onto the YouTube channel and let us and they can watch us live and if they want to comment they can comment on the mm -hmm. Twitter um, so that's the new thing that we're doing that <laughs> sound like fun I'm so like not prepared for today I know that's bad Stop no, this, no this will be good, <laughs> good. <laughs> you know like last time last time we had we had a viewer pop in uh, I know. Like, on, um, on a Ravenheart's uh, Google Plus because it says when he's doing the, the hang I'm on. I'm never Google telling Plus. you all again when we have No, viewers. we'll do that. I, I, I was thinking you were going to do it. I, don't know know <laughs> <laughs> I completely lost it. I was I like, know. oh my gosh. <laughs> we were like fans <laughs> of the fan. We were like, oh, <laughs> oh. You don't even know who it was. Yeah. So, <laughs> tweet at us this time. Go ahead and tweet at us at Ultimate UF on Twitter and 
and let us know what you're thinking. Uh, today we are talking, oh, you know what I didn't say? What? This is the ultimate urban fantasy podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this whole craziness that oh. you're witnessing to. <laughs> I just assumed. <laughs> You show up every week, and that's what it's always been. I know. <laughs> it's like I just assumed. I didn't even hear you not say it. <laughs> you know, after I quit using the script, I thought it, I could like just get it flowing. I always mess it up now that I don't use the script. I should pull that script back but out. But sometimes we have serious podcasts, you know, as urban mm -hmm. fantasy enthusiasts. But I like sometimes mixing up with some goofy, too. Like, yeah. I think the fans do, too. Yeah. Because I, I know we've been serious on a couple. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recall any serious moments, but you know they have been there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've been there. So we're doing, and I feel bummed about today because we did, we're doing Grey Walker without the author, but that's okay. Because I know you were speaking with her. Or you I talked to her a little bit on YouTube, or not YouTube. I talked to her a little bit on Twitter, um, but I didn't Apparently actually. Apparently today, Twitter and YouTube are the same thing. <laughs> this, At least this according is, to Archer. I'm mildly <laughs> dyslexic in the I well I guess I don't even know if it's dyslexia but I I do this thing where like things are similar in my mind so my mind says there's no difference. Yeah. So it's like I'll switch around the goofiest things. It, I'll be like instead of somebody uh mowing the lawn, I'll say they're vacuuming the lawn because it seems like the same thing. You walk back and forth and, <laughs> You're vacuuming the lawn. and, and it'll just pop out and I won't realize I've said that. Um, so <laughs> you just so, have to correct me. And oh, I'm your... just going to go with it. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> Our audience needs to use their Jedi powers to figure <laughs> out what I actually meant. <laughs> But anyways, I did tweet a little bit with Cat Richards uh -huh. Richardson on uh, Twitter a few weeks ago, and um, I thought about asking her to come on, and I haven't actually asked her yet. Um, so I, I would like to do that on a future one, but we were I didn't want to do that on our first sort of yeah. live-ish yeah. uh, podcast and, and then yeah. totally be goofed up. So Yeah, it's... <laughs> We do have another author kind of waiting in the wings that I haven't uh, yeah, gotten back I'm with. I've gotten to page so. forty something now on that one. So okay, I'm you'll be our, our reader. You'll have read it and let us know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working. I'm working at it. Because <laughs> uh, we got so much craziness going on. We I'm trying to get the edits done on the the newest book for the she oh. into darkness. And, oh, okay. Um, so I've been trying to get that done, and then. Uh, and trying to keep up with the podcast and all that other good and stuff. Working and day jobs. Else. Yeah. <laughs> Getting into uh, doing audiobooks and stuff. Um, yeah. Should be in the next couple weeks, I'm hoping. Um, Cursed will actually be up as an audiobook. And then you are working on an audiobook for us, Sherry. I can't wait to Rice hear you. Rice and get. Fire. Yes. I've, I've, I, act, I read it, so then I was like really into it. <laughs> after I read it. I thought it was only three chapters and it stopped and when I when I stopped at three I went, Well that's a weird way to end. Oh. And then I <laughs> happened to scroll down and I go, Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I probably told you. It's only like three chapters. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know how many it's chapters. A odd apparently. way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> but I read the rest of it, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you went on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those uh, archerisms that it's like it's like something takes a minute. A minute is not a literal minute. It's an archer minute, which means it takes as long as it's going to take. Yes. <laughs> and then when that is done, the minute is over. <laughs> okay, I will remember remember that next time. Like when yes. you said, it's going to be a short story, and it ended up being like thirty something chapters. <laughs> It's a yeah. short story. I started a short story for you, and I'm like, this is going to be a mini series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yep. give her something else to read. <laughs> oh, that mini series is still over here working in my head. Okay. It will eventually find its way to paper. Okay. We should do this Gray Walker. <laughs> we should absolutely do the Gray Walker. Okay. Yeah. Um, she has gotten uh, a number of series of. How many books were in her series? Seven. Seven. You want to list them off for us real quick? Uh, you're going to make me go find that page again. 
And I'm sorry, I thought you stayed on that page. Nope, they're different pages. Okay, well, I thought you had like two different tabs. I was going to, and then had to do uh, a few different things back and forth. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is the part where we're okay. be editing it. Okay. Now I've got the list. Okay. Okay. There's seven books, and I'll read them in order. Okay. Grey Walker, Poltergeist, Underground, Vanished, Labyrinth, Downpour, and Sea Witch. That is the that's the list as far as Wikipedia goes. Okay. That okay. sounds about right. When I was researching some of the names, so <laughs> okay, and then um, Sherry, you read Grey Walker. Yes, I read the first one, and you read more than that. Yeah, I've gotten through Grey Walker, Poltergeist, and Underground. Now so. here's going to be the hard part: is we're going to talk about it, but not, but but not give anything away. That's going to be the hard part. You know what? The, okay, let's do this. Spoiler alert: We're going to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> book. <laughs> You have been forewarned. So. I, yes, and I want. I'm going to ask you, um, Ravenheart. Did you read any of it? No. Okay. Well, there's, there's. I like to read reviews, almost like as a get, it, like people what people thought too. Yeah. And I found it interesting that because we talked about bad reviews and good reviews, I thought it was interesting that some of the people that didn't like it said they didn't they. I don't know. They couldn't follow her. They didn't understand her mindset and wh why she did things that she did. The main character, Harper Blaine, the PI. Mm -hmm. That'll take you and out. I don't get that at all. I, I kept thinking, these must be young readers or people who haven't experienced a lot, and I feel bad, so if anybody's listening, <laughs> I hope they don't take it personal. But, I mean, I completely got where she was coming from and why she did. The, maybe because I'm more experienced and, I, you know, we've I been around. What do you think? Did yeah, I think some people can accept paranormal and go with it. Like, well, I mean, her personality. They didn't get her personality. They didn't no. get why she made the decisions she did. And, and I completely I, got it. Yeah, I didn't think I there mean, was any issue well, with that. Yeah. Some people can't step into someone else's shoes. They, um, they in their mind, it's like... If I was in that situation, this is what I would do. It's not what the character is doing, so... It doesn't make sense. Yeah, to me it doesn't make sense. And they can't step out of, this is what I would do, and come over here and say, this is what the character is doing. They So they have a hard time pulling away from what they would do. Well, that's why I also thought they were maybe young readers or... Um, that's possible. Inexperienced, well. Because, I mean, we're... People, we've been around. I mean, and plus, we're stronger. We're stronger people. I mean, I'll say stronger women, but I mean, I mean, because these seem to be women reviewers, and I don't know. I just completely got her. In fact, everything she did, I was sitting there going, "Yeah, I'd do that. Yeah, I would do that." She was the way she reacted to everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we say that she? So she dies. I liked it from the moment it started. Uh -huh. I mean, she's in a kick-ass fight with a guy who's beating the crap out of her. Mm -hmm. um, somebody she's investigating. You're right. dies for two minutes. And when she's, so when she comes back at the hospital, she has the, what do you say? She has the power to cross over to the gray, to the other side? I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like, she, I think they talk about her having like one foot in the gray and yeah, one yeah. foot in reality. Which, and I thought that was awesome. And the way she handled that, the way that first trip, I don't want to say trip, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was like, that's exactly what I'd be like. I mean, as a skeptic believer, I mean, right. I, would be, I would be doing this, the way she did it, the way she wrote the whole thing and how she reacted to the gray and everything is, mm -hmm. to me, exactly how I would react to it. Because you, you don't believe it, so she couldn't control it. Because she right. didn't really believe it. It was, I, I thought that was really cool, the, the way she did it. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't understand where the... I don't know. I just didn't understand how the reviewers were sitting there going, I don't understand why she did or... It's and also they said, And also, for one reviewer, I thought this was interesting, they wrote that they didn't understand her techie knowledge because it was supposed to have been written in 2006. And I thought this was interesting because 
they said that she talks about a floppy disk, and, and they couldn't figure out why she didn't say USB flash drive. <laughs> And she talked about videotapes instead of DVDs. And I thought that was interesting because I'm like, you know what? I didn't even realize she did that. Because they were saying the technology was old considering it was written in 2006. Well, those things still get used very rarely, but they still <laughs> get used even today. Well, that's what their thing was. They're like, I don't even think most computers have floppy disks. And why would she well, be using such well, outdated there, technology? There are still computers working right now at this minute that take floppy disks, not flash drives. And it's true. And they never really mention Herbert Blaine's age. And if she's in our realm of age, and especially somebody who doesn't like to um, adapt quickly to te technology, she might be that type of person that would still be using mm -hmm. floppy disks. I mean, I don't know. But how good of a PI could she be, though, if she's stuck? in an outdated, because she's using telephones, old time, you know what I mean, interviewing yeah. people. Yeah. She's very traditional. It might be partly that it was the time period that it was written, like when she actually sat down and wrote it, that was probably That's what I was thinking too. You know, especially, I don't know how you know her publishing journey went, if this was her very first book to get published though, um, then it could have been something she's written a long time and been. But wouldn't you update that if it took a decade or something? I don't think I would update it. I mean, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't even think to update that. You know, uh, uh, in two thousand and six, uh, that's yeah. like, you know. Well, maybe what, she copied several everything. years ago to where it wasn't so far out of date. Uh, you know, I mean, it was before know. Kindles. Floppy discs have been out for a while, though. I. I mean, I was using floppy disks 20 years ago. Yeah, but I think that people were still using disks. Yeah, seven years ago, flash drives were, were really starting to get popular. They were okay, really and they didn't I had have to, a lot of memory. I had know? to yeah. think that far back. I think I was I, maybe 10 years ago. I had a floppy disk or something like that. I think yeah. I, but it yeah. it was a while ago. But anyway, I guess we should talk about this. <laughs> that was I got stuck on the reviews. Uh, <laughs> but after that, she after so so then she starts sampling the gray, and she mm -hmm. thought she was going crazy, which I would too. I mean, if the way they did it, the way she was seeing shadow people, like or the sh the shadow realm. Uh huh. So and then the yeah. doctor refute refers her to a professor and his wife, who's a witch. Mm hmm. So. And I thought that was interesting, too. They were very helpful in kind of uh, explaining for, to her and to the reader, you know, yeah. the idea of what's really going on. So, you know, you're not crazy. This is what's, you know, these are really, uh -huh. you know, and I like the fact in the grave. That, yeah, and I like the fact that they made them normal. They didn't make them in a kooky house with kooky furniture. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, with the smoke and mirrors, and I mean, they, they, they were a normal family with a baby. I mean, they were mm -hmm. professors. Like even the witch wife was like, "I'm a professor too." Yeah, I think she teaches languages. You yeah, know? so I like the fact that she kept even the people that were in the occult or in the magical realm or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You know, that she still kept them normal, whatever people want to say normal is. You know. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was neat. But I like the way she did the shadow, like the, the way the, I say ghosts, but I don't, the, in the gray, the way yeah. they walked where the sidewalk used to be. Mm -hmm. And st I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. The only thing I didn't quite get is the guardian. Whatever that big creature was that if you made her, if when she was over on the other side, if she, mm -hmm. if she went into the other side and you know what the, if she made any kind of ripple or threaten, something like that. Than the guardian, whatever that yeah. beast is, and you never quite know what that is. Um, Carlos kind of explained it a little bit to her um, that <laughs> Who's Carlos? because Carlos was the vampire that oh, yeah. um, does the necromancy. Yes, yes. He, you... Yeah, he explained to her that it wasn't so much that the guardian was attacking her as it just knew that she didn't belong there at just yet mm -hmm. um, because she wasn't like accepting the gray and the gray yeah. wasn't totally a part of her That's so she was 
So she was like a she foreign, was standing out, yeah, as something not uh, not belonging there. Mm -hmm. um, but then wagon takes some a piece of the gray and stuffed it in her to I... sort of anchor her in the gray. And that's and another. That's when the guardian no longer sees her as a threat when she's fully anchored into the gray and she's able to move more freely in and out of it and. And I like the way she brought the 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 author. I like the way Cat brought the. I don't want to say the gray because it wasn't just the gray, just the underworld, the vampires and everything. She mm -hmm. brought that world in slow to right. Harper. It wasn't like she just dumped it on him. Not dumped yeah. on him. Like she meets the boy that's a vampire, but he's like Cameron. Yeah, Cameron, yeah. and he's like a ten. Well, he wasn't. He was a teenager. I mean, older, like maybe twenty. But he, but he was like a baby vampire. He acted yeah, like he I mean, just he was so, been changed. Yeah, yeah he just been changed by another vampire turned into a vampire. So he was like, he was so non-threatening. It wasn't even funny. It was like a yuppie. It was mm -hmm. like a yuppie from the eighties turned vampire. <laughs> he was actually helping him. But then, uh -huh. and then with each vampire, they got darker and scarier. Yeah. You know, like Carlos was a bit scary. Then you're like, oh, you know, you're worried about her. Mm -hmm. and, and she had such balls because she's just a human. Mm -hmm. and, she's, and they can, oh, and the vampires can see that she can see into the gray. So anything magical in the underworld can tell she can. They can tell there's something different about her. Yeah. But in a later book, uh, the vampires actually are underestimating what she can do. They don't realize. Oh. And she they know that she's different, but they don't know. Fully, oh, what her capabilities that. are. Ooh, ooh, this is. I mean, this is a really good book. I just love the mm -hmm. the twist to it, and the, the mm -hmm. fact that she can go into the gray and and she can see that they're vampires. She can see the energy around them. She knows who's a vampire and who's not. Mm -hmm. And even when when vampires are invisible to normal humans, she can still see them because of the the magic or. The gray yeah, because the, they they, they the hide in the shadow by pulling some of the gray over themselves. Ah, that's so what, to everybody else, they they just lost, they just got lost in the shadow, where yeah. she sees the gray folded over them and yeah. them still behind it, like it's just which a is yes, which is awesome that nobody can hide from her. You know, what I mean, like she can she can yeah. see. Them. And then the later book, um, the vampires are doing that to hide from her, and she's like, "Why are they doing that?" And then she's like, <laughs> "Wait, they don't know that yeah. I can still see them." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pretend that I don't see them so um, that they will continue to underestimate me. Oh, so that was I, See, she's such a smart character. She wrote her so smart and savvy and, mm -hmm. you know, just really cool. Old school, very old school. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, she's tough. She's got, like, um, a little bit of the, the hint of a romance there with the, um, with the antiques guy. Yeah. But... Um, I to do just kind of humanize her a little bit, but yeah. other than that, you know, she's not, you know, a weak female at all. She's no. ready to, you no, know, and I like, right ahead, you know. Yeah, and I like the fact that she wrote her like an older type, middle-aged woman. Like, I don't think that's, she's 20. I don't think she's in her 20s. I think she's definitely older, but I like the fact that she's old school. She's kind of like a... John Wayne kind of, you know, like that's why maybe that's why she does the floppy disks and all that. But I like the fact that she's got that. Like I have a gun and I know how to use my cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I do the the legwork. Like she goes up to, like she'll go right up to that female vampire in the club. Yeah. That one. Now she, this female vampire, I don't remember her name either. That one was scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like threatening her. I don't remember her, the female vampire's name either, but, but Alice, wicked scary. Yeah, it wasn't Alice. I don't remember what it is, but yeah, she uh, was threatening her and trying to compel her, and she's like, "Back off!" Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, each time I'm going, I can't believe she's doing this. I can't believe she's saying this. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. but she didn't care. She had such a high moral code, or. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've got a uh, sense of honor. Like, I'm going to do this for Cameron because I said I'm going to. Or, mm -hmm. And then during all this vampire stuff, because what she's doing, should I, should I say what she's doing? Like, sure. she's trying to help Cameron? Yeah. I, I know we gave the, well, she's trying to help Cameron who got turned into a vampire. So she's tracking down the vampire who turned him into a vampire and figure all that 
drama. I'm not going to go into everything. But during all this, she's got another thing going after her, like the ghost. But you don't know it's a go you know something because he doesn't show up on videotape at her. Right. Her, um, and he just like disappears. Yeah. Like, she'll and just, just turn around and be like, whoa. In fact, when I read it, I'm like, um, hello, that's a spirit. I mean, even I was like, <laughs> he doesn't show up on videotape unless he's a vampire. But I could see where she might be, because he hands her a check. He gives that's her money. True. You know, it's like, if you're a ghost, it's how you have money. You know? That's true. But she kind of explains that he's not, I think he's a revenant, um, is what she called it, where he is so, he was so strong as a necromancer in life that even in death, He's not. He's kind of like her. Where he's on. Um, he can interact on both sides. He's can we explain more in the gray? Yeah. So I think she explained that. What a necromancer a, is. Should we explain for the people listening? Oh. Um, it, a necromancer is somebody who uses magic of the dead. It's like they can. Um, what like they would sometimes sacrifice people and kill them. Carlos talked about the um, the time that he and Edward were going to do um, some kind of necromancy and they had taken all these humans into the space where they were going to do their magic and had killed the humans so that the magic of their death, the energy released in their death, that they could capture that and use that for their, to power the magic that they were doing. So the ghost that, um, his name was Gregory. Um, oh good, because I, I couldn't remember his name. Yeah, uh -huh. he um, he had been a necromancer in life, and he was able to, and he had killed people and used the power of their deaths to, you know, do some of the things he was doing, and he was putting a lot of energy into this um, piano or uh, uh -huh. organ. Yeah, uh, organ. Mm -hmm. And so he put all this energy into this organ, and then when he gets killed, his own death sort of powered... Um, yeah. The magic that he uses to create himself as a revenant, which is a spirit that has more power and ability in the real world than you know an average spirit would. Yes, and he loses so, connection with his organ, which right, is why it got moved. Yeah, and he yeah. couldn't find it. So, so he, he hired, somehow he finds out about her, about Harper, and hires her to find this organ. So she has no idea he's a ghost, and she's looking for this organ dealing with these mm -hmm. vampires with this ghost yeah and then that the 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 end i mean the 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 fight the the fight between the vampires and this ghost i couldn't believe i'm like oh my it was god pretty intense. i always want yeah well i i was like i never thought about a ghost fighting a vampire this is really cool mhm mm and you know how scary yeah. it was as a spirit but a, another vampire the female vampire was helping him defeat the other vampires is how I right. remember it. Yeah, she joined the fight. She was because she wanted to take over. Yeah. The as the leader, she wanted to get rid of Edward. Yeah. So this was like her opportunity when Edward was in the middle of battle. Let's you know attack him from the rear and. Well, he wasn't even in it. He was having Carlos do all the legwork. He was having Carlos do all the fighting. Yeah. From what I remember. Then, yeah, but it was her way of trying to you know he's distracted. He's oh that's worried yeah. about this. And so I can, you know, get him yeah. while he's yeah. That not whole painted. I was gonna say that whole fight thing at the end was awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to read more, but now I want to hear. But let me see. Let me see. I just want to make sure I get everything, and then I want to go into the other books because I want to know what <laughs> happened. Because I want to know what happened after that. Uh, <laughs> going on my notes really quick. <laughs> Oh, what I, I like the fact that she calls it the gray, even though I, I don't know if that's a term everybody uses, or just her. I can't. I remember. hadn't heard the term uh, put think, that way. Like I've heard spirit world and stuff, but I think she's. I, I like if that. If somebody else used it, I hadn't heard it. Because I wrote in my notes because I like it that she used gray and gray walking because representing the underworld or representing because gray, but also mm -hmm. the fact that gray is not black or white. Not good or it's bad. It's in between. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I got mm -hmm. the. I mean, I, I was like, I thought of that because we talked about that with the she series and everything, and I thought that's really cool that she called it the gray because it's gray, mm -hmm. and it's not black or white. It's not this or that. It's. I just thought that was cool. Okay, now I want. 
<laughs> that well, was, you that were going to do stuff. I was like waiting for you to take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> with the first book, um, something that when I first started reading it, I was like, okay, well, she's a paranormal, or she's an, a private investigator, and mm -hmm. this is supposed to be a paranormal type of book, an urban fantasy book. Yeah. And for a while, it, it was like, well, she's looking for an antique, she's trying to find Cameron who's missing. Those sound like very mundane, normal, non-paranormal cases. And for a while, I was going, well, where's the paranormal? You know, like, it, and then it was like a little bit would sneak in here and a little bit would sneak in there. It, I think she did a really good job. If you had just jumped into the series and you weren't really into paranormal yet, where she would take you from this is normal slowly into, wait, this is actually very paranormal because the boy she's looking for turns out, He's been turned into a vampire. Yeah. The, the object that she's looking for it turns out it's actually a ghost that's looking for it because it's yeah. his power source. You know, it's like, okay, here's the paranormal. <laughs> it was there straight off. And I love the fact that Harper Blaine is a complete skeptic. Never believed the character. Never believed in any of this. So she, it, I think, it's like Harper was the reader or a non non urban fantasy reader. Right. Because yeah, it's like they all went on that trip together because she. Like, she never believed any of it was really happening to begin with. In fact, it took mm -hmm. her, I think, through almost most of the book before she really believed it was happening. Yeah. You know what every I mean? Like, she was still Danziger, doubting it. Yeah, every time the Danzigers would give her a little bit more, she'd be like, okay, okay, brain is full. Yes! You can't, you can't deal with it. I gotta go, I gotta go. And then she'd be so, like, wait, wait, I gotta go back because something else happened. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> she couldn't wrap happening. her brain. It wasn't logic, <laughs> it wasn't logical, and it wasn't in this world, and she couldn't. Yeah. Touch she had to take it. little nibbles and digest yes. it. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a complete skeptic in this world. If you tossed, I mean, if if you did mm -hmm. that, she was, yeah. If they would have thrown it all at her at yeah. once, she probably would have went screaming, running. Yeah, and I think um, it, she didn't actually put it this way, but I'm thinking that part of the reason that she caused a lot of things to bother her in the gray at first is because she was kind of like a fish that was splashing around a lot. Like, she didn't know what she was doing, and so she was very much not doing it very gracefully. So she's yes. making a lot of ruffling in the gray, and that was attracting everybody's attention, going, what is over there? You know, where now, later on, she learns to be more, you know, slip into it, move and more what carefully. And that's Dan Zingers were trying to teach her, too, is the fact yeah. that she's got to slip into it. You can't just be jump subtle. in. Yeah. And... You know, get all riled up about it and yeah, make everything go wacky yeah. around you. And the dancing is for that professor and witch professor. <laughs> yeah, I feel like so people know what the heck we're talking about. Yeah, so um, so and then I really loved the way she did the vampires. There was not a moment where you're like, "Woo, sexy romantic vampire." <laughs> they were like, "Yikes, this is very scary." You know, like the. She might mention, like, uh, Edward might give her a slight pull of, like, um, trying to, to pull the attraction mm -hmm. thing on her, like, to the compelling thing. Yeah. But it would make her sick, you know, and, yeah. and to being around them, they smell like death, and it's disgusting to her, and it's like they touch her, and it's like, ugh, you know, it just mm -hmm. gives her, like, this whole death feeling and coldness. And, so there's, like, at no point do you go... She's gonna hook up with a vampire. He's like, there's yes. no way no. she's gonna hook up with a vampire. And these vampires are not hook up like material. Yes, <laughs> yes, they yes. do not care about you know humans. They do not see humans in the same way. You know, yes, they yeah, have a whole different view of the world. So. We're like food. That's all we are. We're like we're like chickens running around. I think mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Except for Cameron, but maybe because he's so freaking brand new. Yeah. <laughs> But he was, I don't think he'll ever be, I, maybe in a couple hundred years, he might be vicious. But, I mean, he seems like the type that would try to fight it as long as he could and get they, sick of the blood. Yeah. Getting into the next books of the series, um, she actually carries a lot of the characters through in the next oh. books in Poltergeist and in Underground. Uh -huh. You see Cameron again. You see Edward oh, again. Cool. You see the Danzigers. You see Quentin. Uh -huh. Those are uh, sort of a geeky, techy guy. Yeah. Um, What's up with all... that guy? I mean, I liked him. He was so realistic as a techy guy, but I felt like there was this, just a little bit of creep factor with him, like there was something to him that I couldn't quite figure out. 
Yeah, um, they get more into Quentin um, in the next couple books. He's um, especially in Underground. They get into his background a little bit, uh -huh. and uh, so spoiler alert: this is an Underground. <laughs> <laughs> um, it turns out that he used to work for the NSA, and they are still after him. They want they consider him an asset, and. He didn't want to be an asset for them anymore, so he took off. And they're like, you don't quit the NSA. It's like and one identity <laughs> meets vampires. <laughs> so he he's found a way to keep himself completely off the radar. You know, he's he changed his name. His real name's not Quentin. He, he actually has his own little apartment that's in the underground under the city. Uh -huh. um, now, they give a lot of it in underground, the history of Seattle, where um, the ground level originally mm -hmm. um, was like below sea level so whenever the tide would come in it yeah. would flood or the sewers would back up and stuff so um, at one point they actually decided to raise the city and when they did that they left the original streets and shops and everything they just built this at the second floor they just built a new street level so if you get into this, what would be, we know what we would call the sewers, if you get into the, yeah. the underground, uh -huh. you're walking on sh the old streets, seeing the old shops, yeah. and, you know, there's, like, all the homeless people go down there, the vampires spend a lot of time down there. Oh, God, that's a scary mix right there. Yeah, and, she, you know, she talks about the history, you know, like, it used to be a lot of, like, you know, during Prohibition, the bootleggers would get down there. <laughs> There was a lot of prostitution, yeah. <laughs> no advertising for... <laughs> I know, I'm like, I don't want to have to pay for advertising. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They should pay us. You yeah. Know, they were featured on the Earth Fancy <laughs> Podcast. That's why we um, use these. I know, I thought about that right beforehand, and I'm like, don't have time. <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. I think I did it early in some of the early episodes too. I had yeah, to. we all. But did. I like the Seattle history anyway. I think that's where they um, actually kidnapped people and shank what they called Shanghai because they would take them, they would yeah. drop them through the floors of a bar and then right. that system take them off to Shanghai. And yeah. They were either worked on the ship or if they were, they said if they ran out of food on the ship, um, they they called land pork whoever the last. One was that they brought onto the boat. Ooh. So if you were Shanghai and they ran you, they ran out of food. You were eaten. <laughs> There's a little note. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the book. Don't get Shanghai in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they had little drop floors that they would. That's how they would kidnap people and shank, send them off on ships against their will. Yeah. Um, or that might have been Portland, but I think it's Seattle. <laughs> yeah, I think, so. I think it's the underground. I heard I've heard about it. Yeah. Before the before these books. Um, and they talk a little bit more about the gray and uh -huh. about um, it's actually that she sees layers of time. Yeah. So she can, um, I think it's poltergeist where she learns to actually like fan the layers of time and pick the one she wants to slip into. Ooh. So she can go into different time periods if there is a memory there for that. Like it has to have you know, maintained a, a memory. That's what, how she puts it. The place is memory of itself. So if there was nothing there, there's no memory, you know, to be had or nothing significant went on or yeah. you know, there's no memory there. But when, when you do the same thing over and over again, your habit creates a memory. It, like, creates an impression in the gray. So okay. even living people are leaving impressions in the gray well, that was story. It, that will continue past them. So, like in the first book in Greywalker, she um, goes to see, uh, I forget which character, and she's like, Well, there's, just ignore the cat. It always likes to sit there on the, um, on the grate, on the heating grate. And she walks in there and the. Sorry. <laughs> there's a gnat. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Karma's in here getting ready to try to bark too. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so she goes into the to the bathroom and there's this cat sitting on the heating grate where it always sits. And uh -huh. she comes in so it hops down and goes away. But the gray shape of the cat is still there. <gasps> it is fixed in the gray because it, every time it goes there it's 
putting its impression there over and over oh, again. It's really like when you, you know, you wear a path in, through the grass. You know, every time you go over it, you're making that path more and more distinct. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what she sees, you know, as ghosts aren't really ghosts. It's just the memory of them doing these things repetitively and wearing a path in his in time. So she can start to tell the that apart the real ghost versus the right the okay. ones that that don't see her and just keep going are just memories of the place oh. and the, the actual ghosts who are living in their former time period will be like who's this you know like they will see her and they'll react to her and then she knows she can talk with them but they don't always remember everything very clearly because oh that's cool that almost makes me want to go get one of the sequels you know they are very good and the series continues to be very good I've I've gotten through um, through three of them and I'm excited to keep going so and I'm getting them on audiobook version um, through our library and the the woman that reads them does mm -hmm. a very good job I mean it's she's got that sort of snarky uh, voice for um, Harper for Harper that I really like not overly but you know enough to where you know this is a strong yeah, person is, yeah you know yeah um, she does Quentin a little bit um, more nerdy than I oh, okay. I wish she would have done especially now that in underground uh, Harper and Quentin kind of have a little moment <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know okay um, because it, she makes him sound very, he sounds very harmless in I didn't the way get she that does at it. all. I got yeah. it's a little strange. There was some there, there was a strangeness to him that was just hiding under mm -hmm. the surface. But yeah, he he see, he knows that there's vampires. He actually has worked for uh, Edward a couple times, but because oh. Edward couldn't get him to you know be his minion permanently, <laughs> yeah, kind of have this friction, you know, like. You can't hurt me because I can hurt you. Kind of a, mm -hmm. a standoff between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he he kind of crosses the lines between you know what's normal and what's paranormal, but not in the same way that Harper does. He mm -hmm. he's aware of vampires. He's aware of ghosts. He doesn't see them. He doesn't yeah. see the ghosts. And yeah. Harper's kind of educating him on how things work. Ah, okay. But one thing that will surprise you as you read on. Um, do you remember the ghost Albert that's at the Danzigers? <gasps> yes, I kind of like seem like a favorite uncle, you know. Yeah, well, the, yeah, he's like the watchdog of the family. Yeah. He's, he reminds me of a dog, but but a ghost. Yeah, she kind of treats him like a pet and her yeah. favorite uncle or something. Uh, yeah, he's he's going to he's going to be different than that later. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know oh, if I want to spoil okay. that for you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. I'll, I'll so, have, I want to read so that. So it's not just Harper that continues to grow and evolve, but all the characters in the world will continue to change. Well, good. Um, you'll see um, Cameron again and how he's getting along. As, and the uh, Danzingers, are they in there? Yeah. Um, the Danzingers continue to be in there. Brian starts to grow up. He's a... Oh, the baby. He's, he's, yeah. he's in his terrible twos. Uh, so. <laughs> he's starting to, you know, he's like Rhino Boy in um, the Poltergeist book. He, he oh, was, funny. He thinks he's a rhino, so <laughs> <laughs> he keeps headbutting her in the knee and stuff like that. And she's got that bad knee, so it's like, no, oh, don't do that. You know? for the injury. <laughs> um, Poltergeist was really fun and interesting. She gets into, um, have you ever heard of an experiment that they did, I forget the name of the experiment, um, but there was a, a group of people that did this paranormal experiment where they said amongst themselves, okay, we're going to invent a poltergeist. With the idea being that poltergeists are not actual ghosts that yeah. are restless, but is the group energy it's, manifesting yeah. and becoming what the group sort of made it into being. So um, it's kind of like taking the energy of the people in the group and you know their natural psychic energy that usually is sort of scattered but they're yeah. bringing it together on a focus and creating something that will act as a poltergeist and because they give it a name and they say it's separate from themselves it lets their psychic 
uh, nature kind of come out yeah. without them taking credit for it. So it's it's a very interesting experiment. Um, yeah. What's happening in Poltergeist is there is a scientist that does that experiment again, and there's a group of people, and they came up with the name Celia, and they gave her a history, and they did it purposefully in a way that it couldn't be a real person. You know, they made details about her life that would not have been possible in her lifetime, you know, uh -huh. and made a story about this woman so that clearly this is not that they just got a hold of Celia, who, you know, that there was a Celia for real. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, one of them draws a picture of her and stuff, and they start to do um, seances. And so they, you know, they sit around the table, and for a while it's kind of, you know, sort of giggly, laughy, nothing's happening. And the scientist has um, a person in the group who's there to kind of get things rolling. So he kind yeah. of fakes a couple things so that people ah. can start to expect things are possible, you know, to kind of just yeah. open it up. But he's just supposed to fake a little bit. Yeah. You know, a couple table tilts, a couple of knocks, so that they start going, ooh, we're getting a hold of something and kind of encourage the group to let the energy flow. Yeah. And that starts to work and then all of a sudden they start to get like way more activity than they should be getting. Wow. So the scientist is thinking somebody in this group is really faking it out. That they're messing up my experiment because they're <laughs> it's not too... letting it just be, you know? Yeah. Because it's like the table's like picking up and throwing itself against the wall and you know, all kinds of craziness. And so he hires Harper um, on the advice of Ben Danziger, who knows the guy. Um, yeah. He hires Harper to find out who in the group is is faking it. And he, of course, thinks it's just this low-level psychic energy. It's They could not possibly be creating this much energy. They could not possibly have created this poltergeist. Yeah. Um, but she's starting to find out that, yeah, they kind of did. <laughs> And this is really powerful entity that they've created and all of their energy is feeding into it, even her energy. Because once she thinks of it as a separate thing, she's feeding it too. Everybody that knows so about it. So when Harper her, gets there, does she see like a gray image of this thing in the room? She sees or? it as like a big yellow ball of energy. Okay, so it's still forming. It's like a baby in the womb kind of thing. Yeah, it does. I don't think it ever actually had the shape of a woman. Oh, okay. You know, like it okay. was just always just a ball of energy to oh, okay. her eyes. Okay. Um, but one of the group has discovered that they don't need to be in the group to make Celia do stuff. And there's like all this friction in the group, and somebody in the group gets murdered oh, by Celia. And so, you know, she's trying to deal with their cop sort of, he's not really his, her friend, but she's an acquaintance of his, and uh, he's trying to figure out who killed, you know, this person, and she's like, I can't really say it was a poltergeist. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, what a way to kill somebody and get away with it. Yeah, exactly, and then the, the guy, or the person who's in control of the poltergeist is starting to go after the others in the group, mm -hmm. so she's got to stop that before, you know, people, more people get killed. Mm -hmm. So in the process of doing that, she, you know, she, she has to go back to the dam diggers to talk to Mara and Ben about figuring, you know, how to do that. And she ends up back with the vampires again to talk with them about how to deal with the poltergeist. So you get to see all those characters come back. Well, why um, does she need to talk to the vampires about it? Um, because Mara and Ben can only give her so much information on the, oh, the poltergeist. Okay. But they can't tell her more specifically about how to actually take it apart because they don't have that kind of knowledge, not the way that the vampires can can see it. Like, Mara can put spells out, but she doesn't see her own spells, where, um, you know, Harper sees the spells. She actually sees the, the energy twining out. Yeah, which She I think doesn't cool. see that. Yeah, she just has the sense of it going on, so she can't tell her specifically, you need to get in there and turn this and do that. She doesn't uh -huh. have that kind of knowledge. Where the vampires, especially uh, Carlos, who was a necromancer, has mm -hmm. that knowledge, so she has yeah. to go and talk to him. Which makes sense because they are physically in the other world and they're also in this world. So they, you know, not like yeah. she's in the beginning of the Grey Walker where she's half in, half out. Right. That's what I thought was cool the way she explained the vampires that they are full on in the underworld or the other side, yeah. and are they're full on here. Yeah. 
So they're they're a lot like her in that way. Yeah. So, so she has to. That's kind of a little quick. Uh, what's going on in Poltergeist? Um, cool. There's a lot more to it, but I don't want to yeah. spoil it too much. No, that's um, cool. Yeah, and then in Underground, um, she like I said, she goes into a lot of the Seattle history um, mm -hmm. and what's going on with the homeless in Seattle, but um, with the gray walking side. Um, Something is killing the homeless, and I, I already knew that when you said. As soon as there's homeless involved, you know they're getting killed. I'm sorry, poor yes. homeless. Everybody. Well, they they are homeless. always. But when the moment you said under the underground streets and vampires are homeless, I go, well, there's a mix. That's a cocktail yeah. right there. Yeah, the homeless tend to get attacked for fairly frequently by the vampires. Yeah, and it's like amongst them, they're like they're just the bad people. The bad people came and. And they beat you up for a little bit, and then you, you know, hopefully they won't. Bad people won't come back around a while. <laughs> you know, the homeless before, people you know. are easy, unidentifiable food sources. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, so often they're they're a little bit crazy. You know, they're yes. Yeah, so nobody's going to believe what they say yes. anyway, even if they live. Yeah. So nobody takes them seriously. So they just our lunch. You know. Yeah. But Quentin is friends with a lot of them because he lives down there too. That's where oh. his apartment is. Oh. So, okay. Yeah, that's where he stays off the grid. He's he's down and uh, he made an apartment in the okay. underground. Um. So you know he's he knows a lot of these people and they're friends of his. And so when they start showing up, dead, missing limbs, he's like, I think the vampires are doing it. And she goes and she checks out the vampires and vampires like. And of course, the vampires it. are not doing it because that would be the easy answer. I knew that there yeah. was. I knew the moment that happened. I'm like, even though I, you know, you assume that's exactly what it was. You know that mm -hmm. it would be that easy. Yeah. But, oh, so now, now I want to know who's doing it. <laughs> well, I'll just say it has to do with the Native American culture that okay. you know, the, they had been there first, and they yeah. were you know driven out by the white man like. So oh, see, now, I never would have got that. That would have been like, what? I wasn't <laughs> even thinking Native American at all. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay. Yeah, so that's what's happening with that one. Um, and it's still, it's it's very cool. Um, there's a lot of, um, with Underground, there's a lot of history of Seattle that she goes into um, that, uh, I guess, I didn't feel like I needed that history, but I guess she felt like she needed it, um, and she takes a lot of time going into it, and it does give it a, you know, more color. I mean, you see it very vividly because she's explained it, um, and she slips into time as she's re researching it. So she, you see the underground in all of its stages of, mm -hmm. you know, after the earthquake and when they were still building it. And she goes on a tour with. Uh, a tour guide who's taking people through the underground, and you would listen to him give the spiel about how, you know, at one point in time, uh, they had built the streets up, and they had started the shops, uh, like they were just getting to where they're putting the shop fronts up, but they hadn't actually got it to connect yet. Yeah. So the sidewalks, you went from the street, you had to go down the la a floor into the sidewalks, then you could get into the stores, and then eventually they filled <laughs> the sidewalks up. I don't know why they didn't just do it all at once, but <laughs> how, like, for a while, people would fall off the street and die because they <laughs> fell in this, <laughs> you know, the ladders weren't very, very good. And I'm like, I don't oh know why. Oh, my gosh. I don't feel like shopping today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was hazardous. You know, oh you And, you know, Seattle, like, in the story, too, it's like wintertime. It's all slick and icy, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I can't imagine trying to climb up and down a ladder. How bad do you need something? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Cause so. I think in that time frame, it's not like they had to shop for everything like we do now. I mean, I think. I don't know. But I'm thinking they could have survived a little bit without going to the store. Or, <laughs> I don't know. Or go to a store you know, out, outside the city or something. Or send the man. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> send well, there's a lot of, you know, like the, the prostitution and stuff was down there, too. So it wasn't necessarily the best elements, you know, <laughs> oh. if you were going to go. <laughs> sneak off. That's where you go to sneak off to, and oh, okay, a lot of drinking and bootlegging and all that kind of that stuff. Would, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so. Is that did, I think that covers like everything. I you know I was worried that we weren't going to be able to talk about the story. So how we were going to do an hour. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we have to talk about the story, otherwise there's nothing yeah. to talk about. <laughs> I know. I was like, going, read a book and uh, you didn't. Nah. <laughs> you didn't, so, yeah. Well, I was sitting there going, I was torn, because I'm like, usually it's, the, like you said, the fans get on and they want to hear the discussion, but then I thought, if we actually had people that followed and wanted to know what the heck we were talking about and they didn't read the story, then we're telling them the story, but oh well. Right. Yeah. Giving a little, it's still good. We left a little bit of out. the story, but not all of it. Giving yeah. enough to get them enticed to go read the story. Mm -hmm. It is a good story. I really liked it. Yeah, and then giving our impression of the story. You know, if you sat down and you talked to a friend about the story, like we're talking to each other, uh -huh. you want to be able to go beyond what just happened to how you felt about it and what you thought about it. Yeah. like I've I've read a lot and I've done some stuff in like the ghostly paranormal realm and it seemed like she went along with a lot of what I already knew or believed about the paranormal. Yeah. So I'm... it was very easy to slip into the story because I was like, yeah, memory of a place making like the the goats the ghosts that just repeat and just repeat. Yeah, I've heard I've read about that, you know, that it's not always a spirit, you know. So it's like things were like kicking in. It's like, yeah, I, I get that. I understand that. And so it was easy for me to slip into the story. Yeah, maybe maybe that's why some people had a harder time cuz right, cuz they don't readings and, and and experiences and stuff. It would be like they'd be like, "What?" It doesn't right. Mean. Yeah, I felt the same way when I read it. I went, oh, yeah, okay, I've read that, or I've seen a show on it, or, you know what I mean? I'm like, I yeah. get that. Yeah, so. so I think we're closer on our experience level is what Kat was when she wrote it, like, as far as the paranormal yeah. goes. And people who don't have that, it would be harder for them to stay in a story and try and digest all this. That's true, yeah. Paranormal it's... information. Um, and same like I was saying with the... With poltergeist, it's like I had already read about that experiment. I knew all about it. So when she was going, I was like, yeah, 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 I, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, I was just yeah. like right there with her as she's yeah. explaining it rather than having to go, now, what? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. or, and I don't necessarily think, like you mentioned, maybe it's younger readers. I don't necessarily think it's that. I think it's more their experience in this area because like my grandmother would have been the same like going what in the world are you yeah. talking about yeah you know? after we after you just explained it that way that's when I went oh I guess that could, in the beginning of our conversation that would have I wish I would have known we would have figured that out then because then I would have been like oh yeah <laughs> yeah because you know I, I tried I, when we got Lord of the Rings on on the mm -hmm. on uh, DVD I had taken <laughs> it over I was going to say on tape, and then I was like, no, no. <laughs> I have it actually on DVD. Um, <laughs> um, I had taken it over to my grandmother's house when the, a bunch of family was going to be there because I was like, oh, you guys haven't seen it yet. You have to watch Lord of the Rings. It was the first one. It was Fellowship. It was it had you know the beautiful parts with the elves and the, um, the Hobbiton and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you're going to love it. And my grandmother sat there the whole time going, what? What? what I'm like don't don't try and think about it just just let it you know be in the world let the world just sort of be around you and she's like what I, I, what and like she just couldn't get it at all like she yes. couldn't put herself in that world at all because she's so not a fantasy type of person yes. you know Yes, so. I've done that. I've done that over the years with my family. Like I'm going, oh, you got to do this, or you got to read this, or you got to see this because uh -huh. it was so cool to me and it moved me, or you know what I mean. And then they're like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't even. <laughs> and they never will. It's, exactly. it's not in their programming, yeah. for lack of a better way to to say it. They they're not capable of understanding it. Like yeah. her grandmother is not capable of enjoying Lord of the Rings or fantasy type stuff like that. That's just that's her experiences and her personality and that's how her her brain is wired and she never will be able to fully enjoy it the way we do. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah, that's funny that you did the same thing though. I mean mm -hmm. um Archer did the same thing. <laughs> Well, you yeah. gotta have some experiences like that before you learn who to talk about your stuff 
with and who not to bother mentioning it to. But family, but family, you want, you like family, you love family. You know what I mean? You want yeah. them to be into it, and yeah, and then it almost like hurts if they're not into it. Like, oh, even though yeah. part of you knew they weren't gonna like it, <laughs> but part of you is disappointed that they didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I totally had a thought on that, and I lost it. <laughs> I was done. I think. Uh, but yeah, those low reviews, I think a lot of times I don't bother to look too hard at low reviews because it's almost like they should put in the title of their review, this wasn't my type of book. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. They, they shouldn't have even read that book. You know, it's like if you're into, you know, Asian poetry, that you know, and that is your thing, then mm -hmm. urban fantasy might not talk to you at all. And just because yeah. it doesn't talk to you doesn't mean it's not good. It just yeah. wasn't your thing, you know. And you know what could have happened too, and I don't know. I'm just taking making a stretch. Maybe this person read P female PI investigator type thing, and they like that kind of book. They yeah, like they wanted, CSI, and okay, they yeah. thought they were going into a very realist. Well, not realistic, but like nonfiction. A, maybe like a uh, murder mystery type of. Thing. Yeah, like a Tom Clancy type. You know what yeah. I mean? I think you're reading something like that, and then they. Give vampires and ghosts and stuff, and going. I don't. This doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that could have happened if you're just reading really quickly the synopsis and go, okay, right. Really figure it mm -hmm. out. Then look at the genre. Right. And some a lot of people. It surprises me because we're so into urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. It surprises me how many people have no clue what urban fantasy is. Um, well, I'll tell you. When you enlisted me in this, I didn't know what urban fantasy was, <laughs> and here I am. Yeah, yeah, it's like it could be totally different. You were a fan thing. of it and didn't even know. I did, yeah. I know. Well, that was at our first show, What is Urban Fantasy? Yeah. We're breaking in the co-host and <laughs> the podcast. Yeah, so everybody go back to ultimateurbanfantasy.com and watch episode one where we talk about it. <laughs> they teach me what, what the heck I'm going to co-host. First I tell you what it's not. <laughs> That's the first 45 minutes. <laughs> and I had a lot of questions going, and this isn't, and this is, and nope, that's sci-fi, and you know, yeah. 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 And what's funny, it it might still be what somebody's like would be into. They just aren't even aware it exists because um, I true. work with the fellow, and he's like really into science fiction. And I was like, he didn't know I had written the books, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I write urban fantasy, and he was like, don't know what that is, and he's thinking urban, like, you know, city stuff. You know, yeah. like he's not thinking how that is. Like even fantasy, you know, like he's he wasn't able to see that, and I had to go. Well, okay, well think about uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Think about, and I tried to give him some things, some examples. You know, like think about X Men. You mm -hmm. know, those kind of things. Those are urban fantasies. That like they're modern times with a fantastical element that's not science based. That's magic based. Yeah. And so he was like okay, I guess, you know, like, he still didn't quite get it, and I was like, well, here, you know, you might not like my book, but you might, so here, let me give you my first book, and, and he read it, and he was like, oh, now I solely see it, he's like, oh, I would never thought about vampires in that way, and I never thought about, you know, the fae now, you know, instead of just historically, and, uh -huh. and so, like, he's now really into urban fantasy, it was like a whole new world had opened up to him, he had no clue, that it was out there, you know. So, but then there's other people who were like, I show it to them, and they're like, "Okay, well, it's nice <laughs> that you wrote something, you know." And then it's like totally, Grandma. you know. And then they go back to their Amish romance, you know. It's like that's just totally not. And I do work with somebody, and she reads Amish romances, and Amish so of course, I thought you just made that up. No, no, she has Amish romance. How the heck do you have Amish romance? That's it's like very, very clean. You know, you you hold hands, and you know it's very. I didn't even. Know. Is that a genre? It um, is a genre. Yeah. I mean, Harley are they Amish even has, people? Even are has, the Amish people in the story, or just yeah, very clean cut characters? This, this has Amish characters. For real? For real? You know, I feel like you guys are teaching me so much <laughs> <laughs> because my my Christian friend, and this is gonna sound really stupid. My 
months ago we were talking and I didn't realize that there were different kinds of Christian music. Okay, I feel really bad now. I thought there was just Christian music. Yes, I know we had this long talk in the car and I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, she's this Christian pop, this Christian this. And then Every she's like, this version Christian. of music out there has a Christian version of it. My mind yeah, Christian rap, you know. I know. Yes. My mind there exploded. Is. I went, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, and she goes, there's even Christian heavy metal. And I went, okay, that, yes, isn't, there that, is. isn't that an oxymoron, really? And she goes, I feel the same way, but I have a friend who likes it. And I'm like, because the heavy metal is kind of... Not? Yeah. Yeah. She goes, hey, there's something It friendly. sounds like an odd mix, but there are people that like it. Yeah, that's what she was saying. She goes, I don't get it myself, but yeah, there are people. That she... But that blew my mind. Now you're telling me there's Amish romance. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, if, you, if, you, if any of our listeners have friends that <laughs> might be interested in an urban fantasy, you might introduce them to the thought. You know, they might be fans. They might just not know that it exists. Yeah. So share it out. <laughs> Spread yeah. the word. <laughs> Ask them, do they like X-Men? That's probably a good chance that they like urban fantasy if they like yeah. Yeah. Marvel Comics or the X-Men. Yeah. Or Iron Man. And as much Wait, as... Iron Man, Iron Man, I think, is sci-fi. No, because he's not really... Yeah, Iron cool. Man sci-fi because he steps into something yeah, that he, he comes created. Into his... He's mm -hmm. super smart, but yeah, the 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 suit is what gives him the superpowers. It's not. But that kind the, of person may go urban fantasy if they like it. Yeah, yeah they probably would it, like urban yeah. fantasy. Yeah, because it's a man flying in a suit. If I'm they, gonna if they like blowing stuff man, up. they probably might yeah. like things like the X Men and things mm -hmm. like that, which is urban fantasy. So yeah, because yeah. he's also in cahoots with the Hulk. Yeah. And different mm -hmm. Marvel characters. So right. I'm just right. Right. that's the gateway. It's the gateway character. <laughs> I, it's a gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gateway movie into yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> we almost got through the podcast without her barking. <laughs> I know. And scene. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, baby's baby's done. I think we're done. Baby, okay. I think baby Talk wants to see you later. Okay. <laughs> Can I end it just like that. Um, we will play the music. Okay, sounds we'll play like, the music and then we're done. Yeah, it sounds like the babies and the, the dog puppy. barked right before the baby came out. That was awesome. <laughs> we're in okay. sync together. See you guys later. You've been listening Hi. to the Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast. Find us on the web at ultimateurbanfantasy.com. Make sure you sign up for the mailing list for updates and goodies. And hook up with us on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube. You can find out more about Archer and Ravenheart's The She Series at SheTouch.com. Okay. That's S-I-D-H-E-T-O-U-C-H.com. See you next time.